What happened to the hypercar project from Velox? The car you see in front of you is called the Velox Fangio hypercar. And what if I told you that this thing was expected to be the next prototype to join the hypercar class? Is there a possibility that Velox returns to Le Mans? Or is this project completely in the dark? Well, let's dive in to these details. So far, 12 manufacturers have confirmed to be building hypercars, either around the LMH regulations or the LMDH regulations. So we have eagerly been awaiting the confirmation of another manufacturer to enter hypercar or GTP. The fact is, the British team Velox was supposed to be on this list. And the interesting part about this is that they haven't confirmed that they are stopping the project, nor that it's happening. What's happened is that the project has seemingly vanished from the face of the internet. To explain this better, let's go back to when this announcement was first revealed. In the year 2021, the British organization Velox, including team owner Sam Lee, announced a return to the 24 Hours of Le Mans and a potential debut in the hypercar class, which is located within the World Endurance Championship. Velox planned an endurance racing comeback in 2025, although that official date was not confirmed when the announcements were starting to release and they were targeting to design their hypercar around the Le Mans hypercar regulations, not the LMDH regulations, since Velox was planning to take the road version of the Fangio hypercar and turn it into a race version once they made their return to endurance racing, and you can only do so if you build around the LMH regulations. But as time went by, less news came out on the Velox Fangio hypercar racing in the WEC one day and you would think that the project would be mentioned a couple of times in the last two years, but it really hasn't. As of right now, there is no mention of a return to endurance racing for this British team. So the question still remains, what is going on? Well, right now I wanna talk about this car because if Velox one day joins the WEC or Le Mans sometime in the future, this is a very interesting machine that they would bring. This prototype is called the Velox Fangio Hypercar. And yes, the middle name of that hypercar is trademarked to the five-time world champion of Formula One, Juan Manuel Fangio. Team owner Sam Lee spoke to Motorsport.com about using the Fangio name. He said that the name, and I quote here, symbolizes the best, and he hoped Mr. Fangio would be proud of our projects. Two incredibly fascinating topics about this car include the fuel it will be using and the engine. The car is supposed to be powered by biofuel, so the car will be expected to run on eco-friendly fuels. This is a first for the hypercar class in general, if of course Velox decides to join. However, the WEC is still in contract with Total Energies, which is the official fuel supplier for the championship. So that contract between the WEC and their official fuel supplier, Total Energies, interjects Velox plans to run eco-friendly fuel in their hypercar. But I'm sure if they end up joining, they will work something out with the WEC. Another interesting factor about the Velox Fangio hypercar is the engine. The engine is directly from a Ferrari F12 TDF and is a 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine. Now, of course, there's also the possibility that Ferrari won't allow Velox to use their engine in the WEC, especially considering that Ferrari themselves have their own LMH project in the form of the 499P. But in the case of the V12 engine in the road version of the Velox Fangio hypercar makes it to the endurance racing version, this would mark the first V12 engine in the WEC's hypercar class. One of the many reasons why I want Velox to return to endurance racing with the Fangio hypercar is because of the incredible sound that the V12 produces. When the prototype hypercar was lapping the Yas Marina circuit, which is located in Abu Dhabi, we got a clear idea of what this car sounds like. I'll show you a clip now of the sound. Besides the car, something else is quite interesting about this whole project. 
and that has to do with the team itself. If the Locks enters the WEC, this would not be their debut at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. In fact, this would be their return. In the early 2000s, one car was dominating endurance racing, and that was the Audi R8. Team Velox was actually a part of the Audi R8's history, having ran some of the prototypes in the 2004 endurance racing season. The British team won historic events in 2004, such as the 1,000 kilometers of Monza and the 12 hours of Sebring. The team, under the name Audi Sport UK Team Velox, decided to contest the 72nd edition of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which would take place on the 12th to 13th of June in 2004. With support from Audi, Velox ran two cars, the number 8 and number 88 Audi R8s. These were decked in a silver and purple paint scheme. In qualifying, Velox obliterated the competition. Johnny Herbert in the number 88 car took pole position, with Alan McNish qualifying in second in the number 8 car. The Velox Audis were almost a second ahead of the next car, which in qualifying was the number 22 Zytec, which was in third position. The British Audis started quite well with Davidson and McNish leading away the rest of the field. But even though Velox was very dominant in qualifying and the beginning of the event, I must say, after which they didn't have the easiest time at Le Mans. About two hours into the race, McNish in the number 8 Audi spun off at the Porsche curves due to an oil patch on track. This resulted in the number 8 car no longer being in contention for the overall victory. The chances for the British team to secure victory at Le Mans now rested in the number 88 car, but unfortunately, more issues followed for Audi Sport UK, this time with that 88 entry, as it would receive a drive through penalty in the night and in the morning, the team would pull the R8 into the pit lane for around 7 minutes to correct a handling imbalance that was caused by rear suspension issues. After these issues, the number 88 Audi would close the gap to the race lead, but it wouldn't be enough to win Le Mans. The number five Audi Sport Japan car came across the line to take the R8's fourth win at Le Mans. The number 88 British Audi would take second with the number eight car in fifth. There's no denying it, the British organization Velox clearly has history in endurance racing, and even though they never won Le Mans in 2004, they were still very competitive that year. So going racing in prestigious events such as the 24 Hours of Le Mans is obviously not new to them. And if they were to return to Le Mans, it would be quite the story as well. Continuing the topic, the proposed Velox racer has a lot to offer, considering that they would be running it with eco-friendly fuel. It has incredibly unique aerodynamics, it uses a V12 engine from the Ferrari F12, and to top it all off, it would be quite the comeback story for Velox to return to Le Mans. And where they previously didn't win in 2004, it would be quite interesting to see them return many years later to hunt down that trophy for a second time. Will we ever see Team Velox return to Le Mans and endurance racing? Maybe with that unique race version of the Velox Fangio hypercar? Or is this project just completely gone? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this previously rumored potential 13th hypercar project from Velox. Of course, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for following along. If you want to see more endurance racing content, especially on IMSA and WBC, make sure to hit the subscribe button to the left. Also, check out one of the suggested videos I put to the right of your screen. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.